And we're also hearing from members of the WWL family. You know, mm -hmm. we've got um, quite the list of alumni, including the legendary Mike Haas, who's with us. Uh, mm -hmm. Mike, I know you were traveling and you found the time uh, to speak with us, and we're so grateful for you for that. How you doing? Well, like everybody else, right? You know, um, you're going to hear a whole lot of too soon, too fast, and that's not even really putting you know, kind of uh, any kind of semblance or, or or make sense of it all. But yeah, too soon, too fast. I mean, it, we we all think you have time to talk mm -hmm. to him, to text him, which we all did. Uh, I was, you know, the morning show, as you guys know, you work, when you get up at 2.45 and 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, you become a lot closer than just the average guy in the next cubicle. And you, you become family. Mm -hmm. And so you, you're just a very close and so Laura Martel and Sheba Turk who's I'm in Los Angeles right now I flew out I was for the work for the concert last night flew out today so I'm in Los Angeles today for the game tomorrow um and so we say very much in touch and it's been years since we were on the morning show together Tamika and Laura and Sheba and myself mm -hmm. and Eric and Sally Ann and so it's that's kind of unique that four and five and six people would leave kind of the industry, mm -hmm. uh, but yet stay in touch. And that's kind of what the morning show does. And Eric was always kind of the, he was the head honcho, right? Yeah. I mean, he always was. Uh, he'd be the first to tell you that. He was the head honcho, that's right? Uh, and so he was already so entrenched. It felt like when I got here, and I got here 11 years after he did mm -hmm. in 89, I think he and Sally Ann almost started together, like mm -hmm. in yeah, 78. Two weeks I mean, apart. They, yeah, that's insanity, right? And then, you know, 30 some years later, they're still anchoring together. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I think people probably forget some of the early stuff where he was out on steel rigging yeah. and, and doing stuff that we would not let reporters do right now. Uh, but, uh, you know, he was he wanted to be a part of it. And then, man, he found his niche. Mm -hmm. And that niche was the morning show, and that niche was food, and that niche was music. And nobody engulfed it more than Eric. He didn't just do it for the morning show. Those chefs and those musicians were his mm -hmm. friends, mm -hmm. right? They, they truly yeah. were. Mm -hmm. He lived New Orleans like we all say we should, but we don't. He went out to restaurants, he went to the music scene. He just did things that you're supposed to do in New Orleans. Not talk about it, mm -hmm. not tell people where to go. He did it. Uh -huh. And I, I always appreciated him for that, man, because he, he lived it. He didn't just talk about it, he lived it. I mean, if you wanted a recommendation for a restaurant or should I go to that festival or, you know, I would just ask him and mm -hmm. then I would make my list in my phone based off what he told me. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just a restaurant, you know, Mike, he would say, OK, and you're going to eat this right. and I want you to get this. And you're so right. I mean, he he lived the things that so many of us say we will do and have time for. Um, and you got to know him yeah, during... With the mask on during the pandemic. <laughs> of him. course, Paulson. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I know you have, probably have a list, Mike, of memories um, of him and just funny stories. Anything in particular that you thought of um, when you're reminiscing? Well, you know, when Eric was Eric, right? So we mm -hmm. would all... The morning show would begin at 4.30, and he would have a tease at 6. Mm -hmm. And it would be 5.58, 559 yep. and he lived I know I knew I knew where he lived I'm like nobody can time it this perfectly all the time but 558 oh, 10 seconds and we hear the door you know the big bank door open noise, up and yeah. he would pop in it's like I think he went to bed with a microphone on right. so that he could just come in and just walk in and do the tease for six o'clock he was you know and then you know Katrina Katrina changed a lot of everything for a lot of reporters. When they were in Baton Rouge, we were in New Orleans, then we went to Baton Rouge and we all kind of lived together. Um, man, I, I, you know, it, I, we, were, we were just digesting the mm -hmm. news mm -hmm. of the cancer. And so this has been oh. so oh, tragically difficult for everybody at, at Channel 4. Uh, and I'm, I'm just sad. It's yeah. just sad. Yeah. Sad, that's the way to put it.
You know, Mike, it is a sad day, but it's also um, an opportunity for us to remember someone who loved and lived as hard as Eric. And so mm -hmm. with that, as someone, you had the unique opportunity to, I remember, I think I was working in maybe Connecticut then when you made the swap from nights to mornings and you're there with Eric. I, I, just, just tell me what that was like, making that transition. You know, a lot of talk about Eric being alpha. Well, here's Mike Haas coming in on the morning show too. That had to be funny. It was, we, you know, and there was that we joked early on. People thought that there was a lot of combativeness and competitiveness, and I was coming after his job. Well, guess what? I left five years, but he was still on the air. So you know, I don't think there was really any worry there. Uh, but yeah, Eric, he uh, he made sure that we understood the, the pecking order. Yet he also understood uh, that there was value because you know what? I would do sports. And he didn't have to do sports. And he loved that. He didn't have to do sports anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think it, you know, it took some time. Uh, and, and, and as you know, the most important aspect of any anchoring relationship, Sally Ann, Laura, Tamika, Sheba, me, Eric, everybody is trust, mm -hmm. right? And we, we, he knew early on, I wouldn't have for his job, I was, was just part of the job. Yeah. And so he trusted me and I trusted him mm -hmm. and there was never a problem. And mm -hmm. that's the key. We loved each other on the morning mm -hmm. show, we trusted each other. And when you have that, you have gold. And then you, still, you have people still talking to each other five years after not being in the business. And they're still one of my best friends in the world. Uh, and man, he was just, he was kind of like, he is, what we say and that is do what eric did mm -hmm. don't do what eric said to do <laughs> All right. do what he did right yeah. do what he did go see a music go down to a club go mm -hmm. over to the mm -hmm. Marity. Mm -hmm. eat here do it don't mm -hmm. just talk about it and i am the worst of just talking about it mm -hmm. i don't do it but i'm hoping to change yeah. Maybe we can all use that as a little inspiration. Mike, we know you've got a lot going on, so we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us and just know we're sending well, our love right there to you as well as you are going through this, well, just like all of us. We feel it as well. Yeah, man, I mean, he's, you know, it's family member. It's mm -hmm. WWL's yeah. family, always will, always yeah. will be. And mm -hmm. so we all say prayers for his family mm -hmm. uh, and for Eric and for, for everybody at WWL. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Thank we you, appreciate Mike. that.